Hey, it's Reaper update time again. Reaper 5.75 has just come out, and it's a fairly small update, but there's a lot of really cool new things in it. I'm going to start off with effects, and the new category that you sometimes see after installing a new plugin is going to remain there for 24 hours. Instead of that list clearing every time you close Reaper, it's going to keep those new plugins there for easy access for 24 hours. So if I right click on a track in the mixer and go to quick add effects, this new category has some plugins I installed yesterday. And same thing for if we're right clicking here, or if we click on an empty effects chain, the new category is here and those new ones come up. Next up is a way that we can divide the grid visually. Instead of having the background of the arrange view, different colors of tracks, so there's a light gray and a dark gray here, we can have that flip the other way around so that those are showing a certain number of grid divisions instead of having them horizontally to show tracks. To enable that preference, we go to preferences, go to appearance, and divide a range view vertically. Now this can be set to zero for an automatic option, or we can set this to a specific number of measures. So I'll click OK. Now we see that this is going to be a zoom dependent division of grids. Now I'm zoomed into quarter notes. I'm seeing these grid divisions on quarter notes. If I zoom out a bit, now it's half notes. Now it's bars. Now it's every other couple bars. And these colors extend down below the range view as well. We look in the action list and type theme. Show theme tweak configuration window. Run that. In here, we can customize those colors. What we're looking for here is track background, odd tracks, and even tracks. That is going to uh, affect what's in this area from the first track up to the last track. I'll just make this a little bit darker. You see that's making it darker. Take this one, make it lighter. Now we see that it's the, the used area of the arrange view. If we want to change those vertical lines below the arrange view, that is this option, empty arrange view area. So I'll do the first one. Let's make that darker. And the last one, I'll make that lighter. And once again, if we go back to the preferences, disable this option, now it looks like that. So those vertical uh, empty areas are not going to be shown. And the, the previous setting that we had, the um, track background, odd tracks, and track background, even tracks, has been applied horizontally. I'll just reset my theme again. OK. And one more thing here, if I turn this option back on again, should show you that even with grid lines off, this shading is still here. So pretty neat feature and something that you can find in other DAWs and something that was uh, requested by users. Next up is working with regions. Now when you copy a region, it's not going to split the original location where that region was. So if I just make a, a random time selection like this, turn that into a region, right click in the ruler, create region from selection, you can see here that the guitar track and the bass track, they're continuous. And also there's uh, you know various items that are the region ends are going to intersect with items. But if we copy this as of this version by uh, just dragging, holding down control on the PC or command on the Mac, dragging that over, these items are not split. So that's a nice change, not having your items split when you are duplicating sections of your song, copying regions. If we look in Appearance, Peaks, Waveforms, there are these options here. Draw multiple MIDI CC lanes if space permits, and combine all MIDI CC data in the first lane. So right now those are off, and my MIDI items look like this. We can see velocity here. Double click that to bring up the CC lanes, and I'll just draw in something to show us some MIDI CC information. So I've got channel pressure, and I've got mod wheel, something like that. So the arrange view is not showing that right now. 
but we can turn on draw multiple MIDI CC lanes if space permits. Click apply, and there are the, uh, the velocity, the channel pressure, and the mod wheel all showing there. And those lanes will disappear depending on the track height. And if I hide one of these by clicking the little minus button here, that will hide it from the arrange view as well. Let's bring that back. Let's now turn on combine all MIDI CC data in the first lane and turn off multiple lanes and close that. And now we're seeing a combination of these two um, MIDI CC lanes. So there's some interesting new options there. Next up in the list is ReControl MIDI. The plugin now supports sample accurate automation playback, which means that using this plugin and sending CCs, like for example, volume, uh, that will send sample accurate automation rather than being limited to the block size. So your audio device buffer size would actually affect the resolution of your automation recording. So if your audio interface was set to 64 samples, you'd have a much smoother automation with this plugin uh, because it's sending more data per second than if you set it to 1024. It has to wait 1,000 samples before sending any uh, control change. I hope that makes sense. It's something that not a lot of users would ever even notice, but you could see that's something that could make a difference where you're doing your first pass of recording and you have some automation there and then you are mixing, but that automation has suddenly changed. It's not as accurate. It's more steppy because it's only sending at intervals related to the block size of your audio buffer. So this is improved now, and it will work like non-MIDI CC automation. The next item on the list is related to take pan. We're going to get a stereo output from items that use pan and pan envelopes when we're rendering. So I have a mono item here. If I double click and open up the item properties, I have panning option here, and it's going to play more towards the left, right? Or I could reset that and open up the take uh, pan, and this is an envelope, so it will pan over time. I could start on the left and then bring it to the right. Okay, so now if we render this item, uh, right-click, render item as new take, it's going to give us a stereo file as the result. There's a new action for working with the tempo envelope to add a tempo marker at the cursor without opening the tempo edit dialog. So let's go to view and tempo envelope. And I'll just put my cursor here at bar 7 and open up the action list. I'll just type in insert tempo. And right here, insert tempo marker at edit cursor without opening tempo edit dialog. So the default action is this one, which opens up this window. And the new action We'll just put in a point there at the edit cursor. Now this action on its own doesn't have a lot of use, so I imagine this is primarily going to be used for custom actions. All the other big changes in this update are related to subprojects. Let's start off with turning this Contact 5 track for the drums. I'll just rename this a little bit, drums into a subproject. Actually, I'm gonna do it on the, the folder track. So it's going to take everything going through the folder track and convert that into a stereo 32-bit file. Right-click on the track, move tracks to new subproject. So now it's rendering a 44.1 32-bit floating point file. It's everything that we heard coming out of uh, contact. 
you'll notice that a lot of other things have uh, been imported into this new project as well. So we're back in the uh, original project, and all those drum tracks are now summed down to this single file. If we play it back, it's going to sound exactly the same as it was. So we've got a mix down of just the drums, and the sub-project is open in a new tab. So here's the original MIDI. We have all of the project markers here now, the regions, tempo markers, uh, the grid size and the frame rate options, those are all copied over as well. There's a lot less that we need to do to set up and use some projects now. A lot of this stuff is now automatic. This is going to be a huge time saver. If we right click on the tab for a sub project, there are some new options here in the sub project rendering, deferring rendering of sub projects, which means that we can save this project anytime we want, and it's only going to render when we're switching over to that other project. And we can also enable prompting before automatic render of background projects. We can also turn off automatic rendering of subprojects. I don't know if I would recommend that option, uh, but it is there now. So we're going to uh, turn those on, and I'll make a change to these drums. Like, I don't know. Let's take the kick drum and add an EQ. Okay, so I put some EQ on there, and let's put on a reverb on a new track. Just working really quickly, just kind of grabbing anything. Send the snare top to it. And I'll send the overheads to it. That'll work just for this example. We can change that end marker because I put in that other item earlier in the project uh, or earlier in the video. So up until this update, if I hit save, it would start rendering the project. So let's see what happens when I hit save. It merely saved it. So if I close this tab, then it's going to start rendering. It will close the project and it will update my original project with that EQ on the kick drum and this, uh, the reverb on the snare and the overheads. And my project is updated, and now we can hear this with some reverb on it. And if we want to go back to that subproject, we just have to double click it. There we go. So that's all I wanted to show you in this round of updates. There are a lot more changes if you check the change log. Lots of cool stuff in there. Lots of little bug fixes and feature refinements. And as always, development of the next update is already underway, and there's some cool stuff in there as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you enjoy these videos and what I'm doing here with The Reaper Blog, consider being a patron at patreon.com slash The Reaper Blog. And for more tutorial videos, check out reaperblog.net.